Hello there! Welcome to No Extra Words, the flash fiction podcast. My name is Chris Baker Dirsch. I'm your producer and editor. We're going to try something different in today's episode and in the next couple to come. Happy Thanksgiving! With a little bit of luck, this episode is coming to you Thanksgiving weekend, 2017. You know, I'm recording from the past, so all I can hope is that things all got together to get it out on time. Over the holiday season, I'm going to bring you some highlights from the first two and a half years of the show. There's a couple of reasons for this. I'm busy at work with any luck doing NaNoWriMo as you're listening to this, so it's allowing me to step back and make time in my life for that. Um, And we have kind of a holiday tradition around here that... We do our Christmas cereal, and we've done that two years in a row, so this gives us a chance to take a break from that and do something a little bit different. And I have three episodes being released over the holiday season between Thanksgiving and New Year's, and we've been in the podcasting business now over the course of three calendar years. So I'm going to pick one episode from 2015, 2016, and 2017, bring it to you with some additional commentary about why I chose it and what has changed my perceptions on it and let you hear it one more time. So we're starting with 2015 today. And the structure of what I'm planning on doing here is I'm going to introduce each episode, tell you why I'm bringing it back to you, and then I'm going to listen to it. And then at the end of that listening, I'm going to come back for just a couple of minutes at the end and pop on and tell you anything that came to mind while I was hearing it and all that. So I haven't heard any of these episodes since they were released. I've picked them out and I think I know why I want to hear them again, but I haven't listened to them and I'm going to let you hear my real thoughts about what it means to bring these back to you. So we're going to start today with 2015. In 2015, I launched the show at the end of May, right around Memorial Day. And it took a while to settle into the groove of having a regular release schedule. And so by the fall, we were releasing episodes weekly and did that for the rest of the year. Over that first summer, it was a little bit sporadic. And in those early episodes, if I wanted to share work by writers who weren't me, I had to go out and get it. So I would go on the internet and read flash fiction. And when a piece would strike my fancy, I would get in touch with that author and try to get permission to air it. Usually work that had been published on their blog, something like that, or that had been published in another online flash fiction journal. Now work comes to us. We almost never solicit stories anymore. They get submitted. But back in those days, that was what I did to put episodes together. The episode that you're going to hear, so we did 28 regular episodes in one special in that second half of 2015. And the episode you're about to hear is episode six. It was the second one to feature. It was the third one to feature contributors. It was the second one to feature contributors who were living. I had an opening that popped up on the schedule for complicated technical reasons you don't care about. And so I put in an episode that was a public domain episode sort of between between four and six. But this was episode six, and it was the microfiction triumvirate. So it was three contributors sharing microfiction. So I think the longest story on this episode is less than 400 words. Even at that time, I was really, really into microfiction. And during the commentary, I also share a story of my own, a six-word story. The six-word story format is one that I find really fun. In fact, as I'm recording this, I literally, a friend of mine who's a third to fifth grade teacher. She teaches in a multi-age classroom, just had her students write six word short stories. I think it's one of those formats that is on the one hand so accessible because who can't sit down and write six words and also incredibly difficult to do. So I made my attempt at a six word story. It's one of two six word stories we broadcast in the show's history. The second one was by a contributor and was, I think it was aired back in August of this year. So This is our shortest episode by far. It's only about five minutes long. The commentary I'm going to add to it is going to be way longer than it. But I'm excited to bring it to you. It's always nerve-wracking to go back in the Wayback Machine and hear sort of the faltering beginnings of something. So I'm a little nervous. But I'm excited to share with you the microfiction triumvirate. And then after you've heard it, I'll come back to tell you what I thought.
Episode 6 of No Extra Words is brought to you in part by The Catapult Podcast. The best in new writing, read by the authors, with a dose of literary commentary that will make you think you're hanging out with an old friend. Find The Catapult on iTunes, Stitcher, or at catapultreads.com. On Off by Taylor Eaton Off, the boy whispered to the star that was peeking through his bedroom window, and it disappeared from the sky. On, and the star came back, glittering in the dark. On, he said again, giggling as a new star came into being next to the first. On, on, on! New stars sprang into existence, shining in crude formations. Go to bed, his mother groaned from the hallway. The boy scrambled into bed, but couldn't find his way to sleep, the starlight too bright. Off, he said. The stars disappeared, and his room went dark. Thank you so much for joining us today on No Extra Words, the Flash Fiction Podcast. This is the hardest commentary I've had to record yet because my big fear is I'm going to be too talkative and overshadow the power of these really short, really delicate, beautiful stories. So I'm going to try to talk as little as possible. Taylor Eaton kicked us off with On Off. Lisa Falls On is coming up with Selkie. You need to know what a Selkie is. It's a mythical creature. Takes the form of a seal takes the seal skin off to come to land as a beautiful woman, puts the seal skin back on to return to the sea. Nancy Stallman's going to close us off with Requiem for Piano, originally published in Literary Orphan's online literary journal. Please check the show notes at noextrawords.wordpress.com for all the great information and links so you can find more great work by these ladies, find out everything that they're up to. It's hard to know who invented the term microfiction or what it really means, but there's a story that most people assume is apocryphal that somebody once asked Ernest Hemingway if he could write a short story in six words. If you know anything about Hemingway, his stories are pretty wordy. He comes back with for sale, baby shoes never worn. In an homage to Hemingway, I'm going to close my commentary with my version of a six-word short story. It's a fictionalized six-word memoir by a 16-year-old. And then I'm going to get you back to the work of our contributors, just because I want to really showcase how poignant few words can be. And I'm so grateful to our contributors today. I'm so grateful to you all for listening. I'm so grateful to our sponsor. I could go on and on. Come visit us, noextrawords.wordpress.com, and I hope to see you again soon on No Extra Words. Semicolon. A six-word memoir. Cut. Bled. Felt. Scarred. Scared. Showed. Selkie by Lisa Falzon. I caught the scent of fish and realized she'd managed to find her coat. So imagine my shock when I found her not gone, but sitting in the armchair, staring ahead, stroking the coat in her lap. I just wanted you to know, she whispered, that I would have stayed anyway. Requiem for Piano by Nancy Stolman. She'd been slipping away from him slowly, as the things that hurt most do. He woke one morning and nuzzled his arm into the swooping curve of her waist, only to find it cold, with a hardened, glossy varnish that could only mean to keep him out. He tried to fit his body into the new curve, but it was stiff and unforgiving. Her long ballerina arms and legs were next. They, too, hardened and reached for the floor, 
anchoring her growing weight until she became too heavy to move. Her ribs cracked open and widened into a wooden soundboard. The strands of her long, curly hair stiffened and elongated until he could no longer run his fingers through them. Pulled taut, they vibrated and wept if touched, crying the last of the unshed tears that now landed like dampened hammers on strings. It was happening, but he couldn't stop it, could only awaken each morning to what remained of his beloved, and take frightened inventory, her toes reduced to golden petals, her polished satin black skin, her long spine a lacquered lid that reflected his bewilderment. Her face went last. On that final morning, her smile stretched into eighty-eight white ivories, feathered with the sharps and flats of dark lashes. In the soft morning light, he played a requiem on her still warm keys, propping the lid to listen to her heart. Wow. I wasn't sure what emotional response I was expecting to get when I went that far back. Once I could get out of my own way, and I think this is something we do with creative people, is your first instinct is to pick apart everything that you did wrong. And now, as a person who's been doing this for two and a half years, I'm like, oh, yeah, you should have cut that there and that. And so you have to let yourself get away from those kinds of things and focus on the content. Um, I understand why I always wanted a piece by Nancy Stallman. That Requiem for Piano still kind of gives me shivers. Taylor Eden's piece is really fun to listen to now in the phase of motherhood that I'm in now as compared to the phase of motherhood that I was in when I recorded it. When I started this show, my son had just turned one. So he was still very much a baby. He didn't walk. Um, he napped, which really helped with the work time. But he was in his crib. You know, he couldn't come down and see me when he was done resting. And he didn't have words, really, at that point. And he is now three and a half and will be in here any moment to tell me that his light is green and that he can come back for rest time. And he's up there awake right now, probably listening to this. So at the time that I recorded that story, I loved it so much because this image of this little boy who has this magical power and you're not quite clear if his mom actually even knows what he can do, but he does. It's like his secret with the universe and the tired mom who just really wants him to stop talking. My joke, my little one started preschool in September and the first three weeks of preschool, he was always the first kid out of the classroom at the end of the day. And I told my friend, I think it's because he talks the entire time. I think he has a running monologue going from when I drop him off to when I pick him up and they're pretty eager to get rid of him. So that, as a mom, who when I recorded it was very much mom of a baby, and I'm now mom of a, you know, not even really a toddler anymore. He's full on preschooler now. That's kind of fun. My own response to the stories and how I treated them is interesting to me to listen back. I was so nervous at that point of talking too much, of killing the story's impact. And I think that's understandable with microfiction and it's one of the reasons that I now I don't do microfiction on its own anymore I pair it with other things because it is so short and so delicate but learning to trust my own voice has also been part of this podcasting journey for me and I hear that in my own hesitation my own story I would like to tweak a little bit more it resonates to me how hard it really is to write a story in six words and I don't think it's quite done yet, that story that I share. And context is so important. You can blink and miss what a selkie is and lose every bit of impact in Lisa Falson's story. But that was fun. That was fun to go back and hear where we've come from. We have outlived the Catapult podcast, which is kind of funny. Our sponsor for that episode, um, Jamie Greenring of the Catapult podcast, has gone on to other things. I don't know if she's podcasting anymore or not but that just shows how difficult it is to keep this train on its tracks with so much else to do so that was the microfiction triumvirate episode six of the no extra words podcast thanks for walking down memory lane with me again and getting a chance to hear it next time you will get 
an episode from the not so distant past of No Extra Words. That'll be coming your way in December. In the meantime, for those of you out there madly noveling at the end of your National Novel Writing Month, may the odds be ever in your favor. And remember, win, lose, or indifferent, it is the trying of things that makes them happen. And for all the rest of you, a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend to my American listeners. And I will catch you guys in December. Take care of yourselves. <laughs>